Welcome to Maynooth and welcome to the Department of Classics. We are a small uh, but friendly department. We teach a wide range of classes and as you'll see from this presentation many of them provide a great complement to other subjects. We're fully integrated into the university and we offer three separate degrees at the undergraduate level. Greek and Roman civilization is our most popular course and all study is in translation. If you're interested in the languages, we teach both Greek and Latin to degree level, ancient Greek language and literature, as well as Latin language and literature. So the following short presentation will give you an overview of who we are and what we do. First of all, a general idea of what classics is and involves. Secondly, uh, what is involved in our first year classes in Greek and Roman civilization. Thirdly, what studying for a degree in Greek and Roman civilization will be like and what you'll uh, be looking at in the second and third years. If you're interested in studying language, I have a slide on the Greek and Latin um, component, which uh, provide for different degrees. And finally, there are some slides on career prospects. So I hope overall that this will be helpful. We are, of course, online with this virtual open day, uh, ready to answer any of your questions and to meet you if you'd like to say hello. So I hope you enjoy the following uh, slides and hope to see you in the future. What is classics? Behind the word, there lies a whole wealth of considerations. Classics has become a very broad and dynamic discipline, which ranges from everything from archeology span and prehistory, material culture and visual art, down to politics, history and economics, and to literature, religion, philosophy and the most rarefied theories. But the main idea with classics can be captured perhaps by looking at the map of the Roman Empire here on the slide. And the heading that classics is the interdisciplinary study of the civilizations of the ancient Mediterranean. So the Mediterranean world was a very rich and very varied one and it involves the classics primarily involve the study of the Greek and the Roman component of the ancient Mediterranean. These of course were separate civilizations. They tend to be associated together very easily but they were very different peoples and very different cultures but they came together under the Roman Empire here. So the culture settled, uh, centered around the land area of modern Greece and that centered around the area of modern Italy were incorporated into the vast Roman Empire that we see pictured here. But in the background there are also many other peoples and cultures, civilizations, which also form um, the background to the or, or enter into the study of uh, the classics. So ancient Egypt, ancient Persia, the Etruscans, the Hebrews, the Germanic tribes that helped to bring about the downfall of the Roman Empire and the Celtic societies of Gaul, Sp Northern Spain, um, Britain and even Ireland. Now this a study of many different civilizations again focuses upon the Greek and the Roman um, and in terms of disciplines classics involves many different areas of endeavor so primarily in Maynooth we study the history and literature of the ancient Greek and Roman Mediterranean but there are also healthy doses of philosophy politics and political history religion, the visual arts and geography as we get a sense from the map here. 
So classics in the first year and as well as sub in subsequent years, um, because of its interdisciplinary nature, makes for an excellent combination with many other subjects that you may be interested in, um, particularly anthropology, English, history, law, philosophy, and as well as business and subject uh, science subjects. Greek and Roman civilization is in group six, and it can be combined with subjects in any of the other groups, groups one to five, though not with a subject which is also in group six. In the first semester of Greek and Roman civilization, in the first year, we survey the world of ancient Greece from its earliest period down to the golden age of Periclean Athens. So we begin with major myths of the Greek gods and heroes, and we focus especially on the hero of Homer's Odyssey, which we will read in English translation. So Homer takes his hero, Odysseus, all around the Mediterranean world, past islands with temptresses and monsters. And there's a slide in the upper corner of Odysseus and the Sirens as they try to board his ship and divert him from his returning home to Ithaca. But in his travels, Odysseus goes around the Mediterranean and this allows us to explore aspects of early Greece, the emerging city-states, colonies, the way the Greeks made war. We turn then to some religious festivals and athletic competitions and the art and architecture of the Greek world. And the slide of the Athenian Acropolis gives a sense of this. We'll be looking at the Athenian uh, the art and architecture of Athens, as well as of Delphi and of Olympia and of the Olympic Games. This brings us to the second half of the module where we turn to the history of the classical period and especially the history of two city-states, uh, Sparta and Athens, which were quite different. Sparta often seen as a militaristic society, whereas Athens was a democracy and had a more varied culture, cultural life. Together they joined to defeat the Persian Empire, which also impinged on the Mediterranean world and forms a background to Greek and Roman civilization, but was defeated by the Greeks in great battles like in Marathon. So the Persian Wars will form part of our study of the classical period, as well as will Greek social values. So in all, the first semester um, from myth to history in the Greek world will give a, a good holistic and interdisciplinary introduction to Greek civilization, which was foundational for um, many aspects of later Western culture. Here is just a repetition of what I said in the last slide, number five, just the major points of what's covered in the first semester of the first year. Um, we look at some Greek mythology, in particular Homer's Odyssey. We look at artistic and religious centers of the Greek world, um, especially Delphi and the Athenian Acropolis. And then we look at the history of classical Greece, Athens, Sparta, and their alliance in the Great Persian Wars. So overall, it's an introductory, introdu inter interdisciplinary introduction to Greek civilization, primarily involving literature and history, but involved also our politics, of course, and religion and art. I have a YouTube video here uh, not done by me or by the department, but which, which gives a great overview of the Greek world and a flavor of some of what we do in GC 151. We cover it in 
more detail and at more length and at more leisure. But um, there are great visuals here and it gives you a sense of the uh, how, how interesting the Greek world was in itself. So if you click on it or paste it into your browser, hope you enjoy. In the second semester of year one, we turn from the Greek world to the Roman. Uh, and there's a similar survey of Roman history, literature and culture in GC 152, Making Rome, Culture, Politics and Society in the Roman Republic. So Rome famously began as a small city on seven hills on the Tiber in central Italy. It was a small city, didn't seem destined for world greatness, but over the centuries it did expand and it came to dominate the entire Mediterranean from the Scotland to the Sahara and from Spain to Syria and beyond. So in the first half of the module, we look at the history of the Roman Republic. First of all, we look very briefly at the rise of Roman power in Italy and across the Mediterranean. And then we focus in on the fall of the Roman Republic in the last century um, of, the, of the BC era. So the Roman Empire fell and was transformed into an autocratic empire. And all of this took place over almost a century and it was a tragic and tumultuous transformation which involved civil wars, assassinations and huge dramatic figures like Julius Caesar, Anthony and Cleopatra and Augustus who won out in the end, became the future emperor and effectively ended the Republic. So the Roman Republic, as we will see, was powerful and had been established for centuries. So why did it fail? This is the question which we focus upon in the first half of the module. It's an important question which still resonates today, um, not least in thinking about Star Wars. Uh, which also has a republic which degenerates into an evil empire and George Lucas was in fact influenced by the Roman history when he made his um, modern screenplay. In the second half of the module we turn from history to culture and literature and social life. We read with the help of Cicero, the great lawyer and orator, politician, as well as the writer and epic uh, or poet um, Virgil. We'll read about senators and slaves, men and women, work and leisure, Roman myths and heroes, as well as some of Roman art and um, uh, poetry of the Republic. So our main question will be what was it like to be a Roman, to dress like a Roman or to live in a Roman house, to worship as a Roman, what did the Romans read and think about? So these questions involve a range of topics, again showing the interdisciplinary nature of classics. So we'll be looking at such things as retail trade, luxury, Roman morality, art and architecture, as well as the big issues like power, gender relations, identity, morality and how to live. And all of these are as relevant then um, now as they were then. So for an overview of the Roman world, there is a good YouTube video, Ancient Rome in 20 Minutes. Uh, and again, this will give a flavor of what we cover in GC 152, but we'll be doing so in some more detail and at more leisure. So if you have a look at that, hope you enjoy it. Um, 
and again it'll give a flavour of what we ourselves do in the second semester of the first year in Greek and Roman civilization. If you continue on with classics in second and third years, you will be able to explore different periods and aspects of the ancient Mediterranean cultures by taking a selection of the modules listed here. And you can take classics either as a major that is taking 30 credits per year with us, um, which works out to six classes, uh, five credits each, and that's three classes per semester. Um, these 30 credits for a major would be combined with 30 credits in another subject, whether history, law, philosophy, or whatever you, else you decide to study. Alternatively, you can take classics um, as a minor, which is comprises 20 credits per year, or approximately four modules um, per year. So the modules um, over years two and three are uh, listed here. And just as a general note, they move in a basically chronological way from early periods to late, uh, namely from the origins of Greek culture all the way down to the end of the Roman Empire and the beginning of medieval history. So in semester one of year two, uh, one of the classes is uh, on Homer, Troy, and early Greece. And this will look at Homer's epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey, um, in relation to archaeology, um, the archaeology of the late Bronze Age, and as well as to early Greek history. We're beginning here with uh, very early parts of the Greek world and the ancient Mediterranean. Now, Greek mythology is in the background of Homer's stories of Troy, and Greek myth is also in the background for a very influential work by the Roman poet Ovid. The, this is his Metamorphoses, which will be the center of the uh, central focus of the second class, which is listed here. Ovid, poet of metamorphosis, exile, and love. Finally, um, in the first year, um, your first year introduction to the Roman world uh, is picked up here with a module on the Roman emperors and the power that they gained on the Roman people and which they tried to or exercise and maintain over them. So this is power and the people in Imperial Rome. So in this semester and in later semesters, you can see that some modules focus on more literary material. Um, Homer and Ovid, for instance, are more literary in focus. Similarly, Greek tragedy, Virgil's Aeneid, um, as well as Ireland and the classics are all mainly literary in focus. Other modules are more historical, Power and the People in Imperial Rome, Thucydides, and the Great War, Peloponnesian War between Athens and Sparta, Roman religion, Alexander the Great, uh, who conquered the Persian Empire and inaugurated a new period in near Middle Eastern history. So the two, there are two modules on law, Greek law and Roman law form a pair, uh, one in semester one, the other following in semester two. These are also quite historical, but they also incorporate some philosophy and political theory. And finally, some modules take a wider cultural view. Uh, women in Greece and Rome begins with early myth, the myths of Helen of Troy, uh, the most beautiful woman in the world, according to the story. And the module goes on to explore how women, both Greek and Roman, how they lived, how they thought, and how they were thought about uh, through many centuries. Similarly, the theme of love and friendship is the focus for that module, love and friendship in the ancient world. And it begins again with the beautiful Helen and her lover Paris, 
and goes down then through Greek philosophy and literature down to St. Augustine, very toward the end of the Roman world, as he wrote his thoughts about the Christian God of infinite love. So that's a very quick overview of two years of study. There's a lot here, and a degree in classics and minutes uh, does have a lot to offer. Now, whatever your interests or strengths or aspirations for the future may be. One final note, all the modules here are studied in English translation. But if you're interested in learning Greek and or Latin, then please turn to the next slide. Our modules in Greek and Roman civilization are all done through translation, and we don't study the languages in those modules or degrees or degree. But if you like languages and are interested in studying what are two of the oldest and most creative original and influential languages in Europe, then we also teach Greek and Latin. We teach them from the beginning. No previous knowledge or study is required in the first year, uh, Greek and Latin, and we teach them up to, um, to the degree level. So you can study Greek or Latin or both of them together um, as separate first year subjects um, over two semesters, and that's a total of 15 credits. Um, and subsequently, you can study one or both as either as a major or as a minor. So if you take the introductory first year language, then the beauty of it is that by the end of the first year, you'll be beginning to read uh, original texts. You'll be beginning to read the classics themselves in the original. So in Greek, for instance, you'll be starting to read texts like Homer's Odyssey, Euripides' Tragedies and Plato's Dialogues, or equivalently in Latin, Cicero's Speeches, Caesar's Histories and Catullus's Love Poetry. So this is the amazing thing about the classical languages is that one can progress relatively quickly from learning nothing to reading some of the, um, the great works of the ancient world and of European literature. So ancient Greek is a beautiful language <clears throat> and a list of the writers in it is a list of greats, Homer, Plato, um, as well as other things were written in Greek, Euclid's geometry and the New Testament um, are both written in Greek and have had great influence. So learning ancient Greek gives you a direct window into all of this. Similarly, Latin was the language of Roman law, which became so dominant in European law for centuries. Latin was also the language of politics, science and learning up until the 1700s. So for over 2000 years, Latin was a dominant language in the European continent. And since then it has remained admired as a training of the mind in logic and concise expression. So there are many reasons to study either Latin or Greek and doing so can set you, can distinguish you from others that not as many people study the languages now, but they are challenging and Studying, therefore, can help you distinguish your CV and um, be of varied use in different types of careers, not only education, but also uh, other careers such as are listed here. And if you'd like um, a YouTube video on reasons for studying the ancient languages, I've included one here at the bottom. So if you watch it, then enjoy.